Yo, Adam Saxon, the guy in the cube, another week, another roundup. I think a new look is a coming. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Prathi kamasani has got a blog post looking at the visual header tooltip. So this is something that was introduced in the June release of Power BI Desktop. And she walks through some interesting use cases for why you may wanna take a look at this if you haven't already. From visual annotations to business logic to just more examples of what you can use this visual header tooltip for to really help your users understand or to get additional information about that visual. If you're interested to see some of the other scenarios that Prathi calls out, or if you just wanna see how to even do this, go ahead and check out the blog post. Links down in the description below, along with the links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. Marco Russo's got a blog post looking at how you can get the top three products for a category inside of Power BI. There's a lot of stuff that may go into this and maybe some things that you're not aware of, including some DAX magic. Of course, if it's coming from Marco, there's gonna be some DAX magic in combination with things like the visual level filters and some other ideas and alternative approaches for how to do something. So as with most things, there's more than one way to do it inside of Power BI. Depending on your data, it may be more performant one way versus another, so always test what you're doing. But Marco's gonna walk you through different approaches to actually accomplish this task, including subtotals, which is awesome. If this is something you've been struggling with or you wanna figure out how to get a subset of products for a given category or maybe a different, or something that's like that situation inside of your data, check out this blog post. Again, links down below. Reserad's got a blog post looking at what fields do you hide inside of Power BI. You may not even know that you can actually hide fields in the field well. You can also hide tables. This is a way you can go about creating what's called measure tables. And there are a lot of reasons why you would want to do either hiding of fields or tables or what have you. And Reza walks through a couple of examples of things that you may wanna hide in your data model so that the authors of the report don't necessarily get bothered by things that don't really matter. One of the big things he calls out is your surrogate keys or your primary keys that you use for relationships. Those types of things are great candidates for hiding as well as other items. I love this blog. It's a topic that some people that I talk to don't even know about. So I'm happy that he's blogging about it and able to share that out with other folks. So hopefully it's useful to you. Something for all you admins out there, there's a new tenant setting for receiving service availability notifications. So if you wanna be proactively notified that, hey, maybe there's some issue with my region or something with the service, you can actually get that from your tenant at this point. Before it was somewhat reactive, you had to go to the Office 365 portal for service health, or you had to go to support.powerbi.com. So this is a way that admins can get some notifications about something that's happening from an email. So if you're the admin of your tenant, be sure to go set this up and make sure that the right security groups for your admins are in place or other folks that need to receive those notifications. I mentioned that a new look is coming and it is here, a new look option for the Power BI service. This was first debuted at Business Application Summit and most people have commented positively from what I've seen. And you can go inside of your tenant from an individual perspective and turn on in the upper right, you should see a hey, new look on or off. You can turn it on and help give feedback into what you think about it. Personally, I like the new look. It looks a little more modern, a little cleaner, and I'm digging it. So we got the new look for desktop. Now we've got the new look for the Power BI service. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Maybe it was the new look. I don't know. Leave it in the comments below. I wanna hear from you. Let's continue the conversation. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.